Hello and welcome to the Summer 2024 Trash Anime Award Show. As the Summer 2024 season comes to a close, it's important to remember not the masterpieces, but the flawed failures, the Igumi legacies of the season. And to do that, we have our guest judges, Lunar Equinox with a wig on, Hatsune Friku, and Gojo Off Wish. So, without further ado, let's begin. Isekai can be summed up in one word. Floxy Nasin Hilly Pillification. So, what was the worst Isekai of the season? Start Dash Monogatari was the lowest rated of the season, which is completely unfair. Every episode was so good it felt like it was 3 minutes long. The Suicide Squad anime was one of the most anticipated shows, which immersed me so much I felt like I was on the Suicide Squad. Quality Assurance in Another World is about a group of beta, beta testers, testers who get stuck inside of the game. But instead of getting mad bitches, the protagonist decides to keep doing his job. We all had that one coworker. Guys, we can't sneak food home because that's essentially stealing from the company. Down boy, down. However, the award for worst isekai of the season goes to... Failure Frame, I became the strongest and annihilated everything with low-level spells. This story had to be written by an edgy 12-year-old who got bullied in school by the janitor. A loser protagonist who is constantly beat by his father while his mother watches K-dramas was teleported to another world with his classmates. He then fails the aptitude test, gets thrown into a dungeon of monsters to die, but after a few minutes of grinding, he reaches level 6 gazillion and is just so cool. He just felt like a school shooter whose manifesto is Ari Ferretta. He'll say stuff like, I tried to be kind. I try to be normal, deceiving everyone. And because he's so edgy, they needed to make the antagonist significantly more vile. What would a bad person do? Oh, I know, assault! That guy wants to assault women! All authors leave a piece of themselves inside of their stories, including their hidden fetishes. So, which one did the worst job at hiding it? A nobody's way up to an exploration hero follows Kaito, who summons mythical beings who all look strangely similar to people I would see in Twitch whispers. And don't make them eat rocks like that, man. This is the reason I can't tell people I watch anime. Twilight Out of Focus is the most obvious of these instances. You can't fool me, I'm not stupid. This is clearly for people that like feet. Put those grippers away. However, the award for most clearly hidden author fetish goes to... My wife has no emotion. Man, another long day at work. I wish when I came home I had someone, anyone. Wait, how could I forget? You've always been there for me. I never noticed how the light reflects off your wheels. Oh, you brought a friend, <laughs> dirty girl. It's because she's black, isn't it? And that's basically the gist of the entire show, but let's see what the people thought. That's the future for us, looking how women carry themselves there. Wow, maybe they were right. Women will be having more sex with robots than men by 2025. Since robot romance is clearly the peak, what was the worst romance anime of the season? Atari My Dear Moments was more robot romance but in a subnautica world. Makine Too Many Losing Heroines follows the losers that weren't picked by the main character in a romance anime, which is why they trauma dump on the first person they see. Unfortunately, it can't get the award because that dumping is on a golden toilet of peak. And the award for worst romance anime of the season goes to... No longer allowed in another world. There is nothing less romantic than trying to commit double suicide with your wife, unless you do it like white people. Go on a sailing trip in the ocean. After Sensei attempts Romeo and Julietting, he gets isekai to another world, and his first thought is, wow, a drag- I should probably find my wife so we can kill ourselves again. It's still a good show though, in like a 13 reasons why type of way. Romance was truly in the air this season, and in some people's homes. Which is why unfortunately for me, I have to talk about the theme for the season, which was Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back at 17 minutes and 59 seconds. So what was the best incest anime of the season? Oshinoko Season 2 returned to top the charts again, which is why I didn't watch it. Days with my stepsister is like if domestic girlfriend took itself seriously, which is the equivalent of going to a strip club to get a wife when you should go to the electronics store. However, the award for best incest anime of the season goes to... Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian. Alia is a girl who I can't understand because I don't speak Russian, which is why Yuki is clearly best girl. Give your little sis a squeeze! This show did the trope the best by not having them fall in love and creating inbred creatures. If I wanted that, I would go watch the Amish community. 
I can say that because they can't watch my videos. Since almost all fantasy anime this season were isekai, it makes it pretty easy to pin down the worst fantasy anime of the season. Dungeon people follow the behind the scenes of running a dungeon, which is an aspect I don't think anybody has ever cared about. Why does nobody remember me in this world is a world whose history has been rewritten, so instead of the five races being defeated, they weren't. Which is probably one of the most cardboard cutout fantasy stories ever, the only reason it's not the worst is because of CGI Humvee. Fly by Earth is Alice in Wonderland, but everyone is racist towards her. Take that woman, this is reparations for furries. However, the award for worst fantasy anime of the season goes to... The strongest magician in the Demon Lord's army was a human. Ike is trying to keep it a secret that he's human, but he's awful at it and basically everyone knows. This woman's second words to him were, you're human, aren't you? Aside from that, he's insufferable. He keeps saying, I'm human, I can't kill humans, even though that's what a demon would do, but I can't can't because I'm human. Oh yeah? Tell that to the creator of Shmirnoff. Also, this is an isekai. Bet you didn't see that coming. On the other side of power fantasy anime, what were the oddly wholesome anime of the season? Delico's Nursery follows vampire aristocrats who have to do every parent's worst nightmare. They have to take wow, care of their children, wow. which nobles never do. Don't know what your parents' excuse was. Aside from being Hotel Transylvania, there's one big twist. Apparently. Trump is somehow involved. Loving your kids is gay. Shoshiman, How to Become Ordinary, was one of my guilty pleasures this season. The best way to describe it is imagine sticking three autistic dudes in a room and asking them how someone made hot chocolate by only dirtying a single spoon. Okay, three cups. Wow, more than one this time. Then we... Uh, I sure hope we don't spend 20 minutes trying to figure this out. However, the award for most oddly wholesome anime of the season goes to... A Journey Through Another World, Raising Kids While Adventuring. After accidentally being killed by the Twink God, Takumi was reincarnated in front of some kids who he adopts and takes on dangerous expeditions. Which is why women typically get custody of children, but you know, it had some cute moments that made me want a couple of little YouTubers running around the house. Preferably not anime ones. In anime, it's important to have progressive gags, but which ones kept beating the dead horse? The magical girl and evil lieutenant is the classic enemies to lovers storyline, using the gag of trying to hide their relationship with the only twist being the evil man is just her sugar daddy. Wistoria Wand and Sword uses the gag of a magician who can't use magic, instead using the power of the gym. <laughs> However, the award for the most overused gag anime of the season goes to... My dear friend Nokotan. This show is the kind that smoothens your brain. The entire anime was the constant gag of deer doing random thing equals funny. For example, if I'm playing fetch with my dog, you know what I wouldn't expect? A deer to throw it back to me. For more information, look up Nokotan throwing it back. This brings us to what was the worst ecchi of the season. The Cafe Terrace and its goddesses got a second season, leaving you pondering why your grandmother didn't leave you a cafe full of women instead of a heavy armoire. Plus Sized Elf is a show that must have been created as a tax write-off. The story follows a massage therapist of all people helping women lose weight. My problem is that their base model changes every frame and their designs felt just as bad as Concords. No. That's too far, even for you. But the award for worst ecchi of the season goes to... 2.5 Dimensional Seduction. This was the most depressing thing I've ever watched. The only edging that was going on was me edging the shotgun in my mouth. In game, of course. Basically, Rintaro is part of the manga club and only loves 2D women. That's right, not even a Roomba is enough to excite him. One day, a woman joins the club, cosplaying the person he loves the most, completely changing his perception on life. Which is completely false advertising. People are gonna start joining manga clubs expecting nor fun, but instead they get people like me and Roombas. Did you know that you can't sustain a hum while holding your nose closed? Go on, give it a try. You know how stupid you look right now, even if you didn't do it. That aside, what anime had the most accurate title? We had Dahlia in Bloom, crafting a fresh start with magical tools. From this, we can infer that her name is Dahlia, fresh start means isekai, and she makes magical tools. But it leaves too much up to question. What are magical tools? Does this job offer health insurance? And why is her father Shao Tucker? The Osan newbie adventurer, trained to death by the most powerful party, became invincible. Gives us a lot to work with. Osan translates to middle age or old man. We know he's a new adventurer who is now very strong due to being trained by strong people, but it's a bit wordy, and invincible is kind of misleading. I could rename it elderly man becomes a powerful adventurer through abuse. However, the award for most accurate title of the season goes to 
I parry everything. It's simple, sweet, and tells you exactly what's gonna happen the entire anime. Monsters, parried. Humans, parried. Parry, parried. Good writing with a solid protagonist, parried. Everyone knows the most difficult job in the world is being a YouTuber, so what was the best YouTuber anime of the season? Nare Nare Cheer For You has a famous parkour doer? Athlete? I don't know. But it sure is funny to watch. Climb up this, fucking parkour! Flip here, parkour! Do one of these, parkour! Mayonaka Punch is about a girl who got cancelled for punching someone, which beats the alternative, I guess. So she partners up with vampires to make it to a million subscribers, but it can't be the best because a real YouTuber is always Two steps ahead. And the award for best YouTuber anime of the season goes to... VTuber Legend, how I went viral after forgetting to turn off my stream. This is the best example of what it's like to be a VTuber, and I should know, I'm part of Hololive after all, see? Hey, that's my shoulder. What? Right there. It shows a lot about the behind the scenes, collaborations, content management, and most importantly, drinking to drown out the voices. Still, the most accurate part is that they made the entire anime into an advertisement. Best girl is something I can easily decide on because I like women. Pseudo Harem has Rin, who is an actress that can be anything you want. A tsundere, kudere, dondere. I believe the locals call this a catfish or a normal woman. Either way, they're gonna have to fake their orgasms. The elusive samurai has some of the most dynamic artwork in what Japan considers best girl, which is weird for two reasons. However, the award for best girl of the season goes to Makoto from Senpai is an Otokonoko. Is this not the epitome of beauty and grace? Kind of weird they gave her both a female and male love interest, and I still don't know what a Otokonoko is, but it probably doesn't matter. Now it's time to figure out what was the best trash anime of the season. Ramen Akaneko was about a cat ramen shop. Don't let the immigrants They're find out about this one. Sakuna of Rice and Ruin was a video game adaptation I never expected to see. Stardew Valley on top though. Tasuketsu Fate of the Majority was probably the worst thing I watched this season and I watched a man try to introduce a Roomba to his parents. However, the award for the best trash anime of the season goes to Love is Indivisible by Twins. Siblings fight over things all the time. I used to fight with my brother over who got to use the good controller for the Xbox. I never won, of course, because I was the younger brother. <laughs> siblings. Anyways, these siblings are fighting over a different type of joystick. Here's the twist. They both don't fight and willingly give him up to the other sister. Poor June gets gaslit into dating one of them just to be sent to the other sister. But the funniest part is, he's like, You're breaking up with me? Yeah, sure, I'll go on a date with your sister tomorrow. Thank you for coming to the fourth annual Trash Anime Awards show. Now me and my wife gotta get out of here. Yo, why mo? Domain expansion. Hello, purple. Yokozo, watashi wa no soul society. Oh wait, wrong anime.